Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> we're out here at uh, the uh, county courthouse and interviewing uh, Bert Byer. Let's see, they they like to know your uh, birthday. We aren't going to send you any birthday cards, but do you know your birth date and uh, your uh, address? Yeah, uh, I was born in uh, November 13, 1922. Oh, yeah. And where? Uh, here in Manhattan. Oh, yeah. Gosh, you're not too far from home then, are you? Them can't get out of town. <laughs> I see. They did say one time they'd like to have your, uh, I'll get it down, a serial number. Not not so scary, but you remember you had a serial number? 1708-3203. Oh, yeah, that's right. See, you don't talk about that. What's that 17 mean? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I really I'd heard one time they talked about that metric. Mine was 17, too. It's from the Midwest is where it was from. So. Mm -hmm. Of course, the other thing is, Bert, I think we're really lucky to have Joe, is it Capes? Yeah. Capes uh, uh, interviewing us for this. And boy, he uh, is working on his Eagle Scout, and man, he has really been a big help to us. Is that right? Boy, it's really great. To, and he's really pitched in and helped us get this thing off the ground. And mm -hmm. so we really appreciate uh, him doing that. And gosh, there, we've had a lot of other help on this, too. Well, let's see, I guess I'm Ken Visser. I don't know if they need my name on there or not, but anyway. So maybe we ought to get, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, then let's see, we, we need to know what branch of service you use. I was in the infantry. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so you got to do some walking then, huh? Yeah, oh. but we rode, we rode most of the time. Oh, you did? Oh, is that right? Oh. But it was 86th Infantry Division. Oh yeah, 86th, uh -huh. Let's see, and when did you go into the military then? Well, I was actually in K-State in school. Oh, I see. In ROTC program. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I actually enlisted in 1943 in school. Oh, I see. In the ROTC program. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, that part was done, got out of school, and I went to OCS after that. Oh, yes. Let's see. What was your major here at K-State? I was an ag major. Uh, well, just Agronomy and animal husbandry. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad you said animal husbandry. They've changed that to animal science. Now. Have they? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, the other, uh, oh, yeah, and the other thing was, I guess you, you can remember where you were on the, uh, Beach, I mean, uh, Pearl Harbor Day. Yeah, uh, I remember the next, the day after when the Congress met and declared war, I was in the parking lot uh, having my noon lunch. Uh, behind the engineering building oh. when they made that announcement. Is that right? Yeah. Was well, it in that in a building? Would that have been Seton Hall or which? Seton Hall. Yeah. There wasn't too many buildings around. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah, so so, so you graduated from K-State then before you went here? Yeah, they let me stay in school. Oh, yeah. That's why they had us enlist. Oh, yes. Uh, while we were still in school. Uh -huh. So I graduated at the end of the, the uh, spring semester. Uh -huh in uh, 43 and uh, went to OCS right after that. So you didn't have to work too hard to find a job then, did you? I knew where I was going to go. <laughs> didn't that fell out too many. Well, let's see, where did you go for your OCS and or what was the first? For what? Where did you go to report then for your OCS? Uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. Oh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Did they? No, uh, do a pretty good job of fitting you in clothes, or did they? Yeah, yeah, you bet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did a good job. Oh, yeah. And then how long were, was you at Fort Benning, very long? Or? Well, uh, just normally a 90-day oh, deal. Yeah. Uh, but they found out I was colorblind when I got there. Oh, is there? And they took me out of class and said, we can't, can't use you. <laughs> so they left me in a casual company for two or three weeks trying to decide what to do with me. And finally come back and said, well, it's not so bad after all. <laughs> Get back in class. <laughs> Is that right? So. Oh, yeah. I guess it makes quite a difference too how bad they need somebody too. Well, I guess <laughs> that was one of the problems. Oh, is that, well, I guess that never has bothered you any, has it? I, and I, I never even knew I was colorblind. Oh, yeah. Until they found it. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I, I don't see things that other people do, like the stoplights. You oh, know. Uh, I can tell the difference between red and green, uh, but uh, 
reds, greens, and browns all look about the same to me. Oh, I see. So it's, I'm sure I don't appreciate colors like a normal person would. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. But I haven't found any problem, really, other than the... Uh, I guess you uh, never run any stoplights or anything in here. If Not if did. my wife's with me. <laughs> well, yeah, well... Well, I see green as a clear light. Oh, yeah. Just a white light, no, uh -huh. no color at all. So it's, it stands out as green to me. Yeah. And red is a darker color. Oh, it's harder to see. Uh -huh. But I can I can tell a difference like that. I know I even have trouble on the, the sun's shining on them. Which one is uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's doing it though. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> do you have any uh, the first day you reported in the service, do you can you remember that or what it was like or <sighs> Well of course I my first day in the service was really I was on campus, you know. Oh, Oh, you really were... Uh, I'm still in college. Oh, and you took an oath, you know, just... Uh, yeah, oh, we took that? an oath. Oh, I yeah. see, say, talk about that. Where was the uh, ROTC building? Did they have one there? It was upstairs, east end of the uh, Nicholas Gym. Oh. Is third that? third floor. Oh, I see. Now, what year did you say that was again? I, 43. 43. Oh, yeah. And that's when you really were part of the... Uh, the well, I was an ROTC. I went to start in 40 to school, uh -huh. but I was in the ROTC program from year one. Oh, yes. But they didn't enlist us until 43. Oh, yes. See, the war had started in Europe, uh -huh. so we were committed, and they, uh, but since we were in school, they were going to give us a chance to finish if we were close to graduating. Oh, yes. They gave an extension to us to stay and finish uh -huh. and get our degree oh, yeah. before we went to Benning. Yeah. Yeah, well, so that worked out fine. Yeah. I was just wondering how that degree helped. Did it help you any in the military? <laughs> uh, that's I don't think so. I think my vocation helped more than degree. What book they mean? Well, we were in the rock business, oh, you know, crushing rock and oh, yeah. using dynamite and explosives. And I think. Oh. That came to play in how they placed me when I joined my first unit. Yeah, about the boot camp, was it? Was it that well, I, I missed boot camp. Oh, you, my first actual experience in ROTC, you you don't have boot camp as such, you know. Oh, yeah. You I just see. go right into uh, oh, oh, instructions and training on how to be an infantry officer. Uh, well, let's see, then where'd you go from Fort, uh, Fort Benning, is that right? Yeah, joined the division, 86th Infantry, oh. and uh, Louisiana. They were just finishing maneuvers, but so we didn't, I didn't do anything there except formed a unit oh, yeah. and uh, got my assignment. And wh where in Louisiana is it, that camp, Pope? Uh no. Livingston. Oh, Livingston. Mm -hmm. You don't know what town that's called. I'm not up on... Alexandria. Oh, yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. So, see, talking about that, uh, I don't know, were you pretty well traveled before you went into the military? No, not really. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, really not. Oh, yeah. That was my f first experience to travel. <laughs> because you didn't get homesick. Right? Well, I'd been to Washington once. Oh, yeah. D.C., you mean? Or, or this Washington, Kansas? D.C. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh -huh. But that was, that was really my first extensive trips oh yeah and that was seemed like I was traveling all the time with oh. and that'll come out in the rest of my story oh, but okay. Maybe better just be just an awful lot of traveling oh yeah move uh, I see and then from what what Livingston or where'd you go then California the division moved to California and three different spots out there to take amphibious training we were slated oh. for the Pacific oh as a island hopping division so we we uh, trained at uh, San Luis Obispo and Camp Callan and San Diego to do the, the landing maneuvers and so forth. That would be interesting what <laughs> them amphibious vehicles were like or what? Yeah, <laughs> that was. Oh, yeah. Do you have any of them amphibious jeeps or something? Yeah, that was... Uh, I have motion sickness problem. Oh. And you can imagine what happened to me in that boat. <laughs> Up and down. Oh, 
and rendezvousing behind another boat that's putting out diesel fumes. Oh. I got plum sick. I, but you know, you're, I had 40 guys there was looked after I was supposed to get them to shore and yeah. win the battle. But boy, the time we got to that shore and that old front gate come down on the boat, all I could do was crawl out. <laughs> and I'd have been doing the same thing if they'd been shooting at me. I just told the guys, go ahead. <laughs> I'll catch you. But it, oh, oh, yeah. they didn't have any uh, medication at that time oh, for that motion right? sickness people. Yeah. And that was my first bad experience there and every made four ocean crossings to Europe and the Pacific. Got sick on every one of them. Well, that's what I was wondering about. Yeah, was a, would you go over on a troop ship or do you Queen Mary? Or? We had a nice luxury liner going to Europe. And I see now you're going. Where'd you ship out from? Uh, from from uh, New York. New York to what? to France. Yeah, was it would have been La Havre? Do you remember? La Havre. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <clears throat> well, let's see. We got you. I know that sea sickness really bothered me too. That was the hardest part of my whole time in the yeah. service. And gosh, I, and gosh, I, yeah, I still remember I vomited a few times. I didn't check the wind direction. Some of that kind oh, of oh, oh, yeah. terrible. Oh, yeah. have you been on any cruises since? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I've overcome it a little bit. Oh, is that right? Uh, I've improved. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I think must have been an aging process or something. I don't know what. Oh, well, that'd be, well, let's see, now, now we're, we're here in La Harve. Do you remember what uh, camp they called that? Was Old Gold. Old oh, Gold, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see, I guess I was at Camp Lucky Strike. I, of course, that's a lot later, but, so I guess it must well, have Well, it was there when we, oh, was we had all the cigarette names oh, in, the, in the camps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let's see, when you hit La, La Harve, let's see, what do you, what, when would that have been, I see? Uh, I'd been in uh, f 45 early. Uh, we left California in February 45. So we got there in March of 45. And landed in La Harve. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. <clears throat> Was there much damage around the La Harve then? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. The docks were in bad shape. There'd been some damage. and but. We pulled up to a regular dock, oh, yeah. and, and even though it was shot up quite a bit. Well, then, <coughs> did, did you stay there very long, or did you? No, they went to campsite. We were in the tents there for, oh, I suppose a week. Oh, uh-huh. And then they took us, uh, trucked us to a railhead. Oh, yeah. And we rode the 40 and 8 oh. cars. Oh, yeah. Let's see, from, maybe we ought to explain what, what a 40 and 8 is. It's a small car, rail car, that uh, will handle 40 people or 8 horses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what we were. Oh, yeah. Well, you had 40. <laughs> but it traveled quite slowly. Oh, yeah. But no lights, of course. Oh, and, that's right. And it was chilly then. That was early in the year, you know. Oh, yeah. And of course, no facilities. But every while, I'm try trying to stop every now and then and get, let the guys get out and <laughs> relieve themselves. Oh, 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 yeah, that would have been quite an experience. All right. Of course, uh, I guess maybe they're having the same situation now in New York while they got there is out the lights. But yeah. uh, well, then, uh, where did you? Where did they want to get you to? Or where was you? We went to the Rhine River. Oh yeah. The battle was. They hadn't crossed the Rhine yet. Oh yeah. And we relieved another division there. Now, so and what was, division was you in again? 86th Infantry. 86th, oh yeah. And where, uh, so you don't, we're on the Rhine, you know, Rhine's pretty long. We were Clone. Oh, Clone, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. And Burn, along in that area. Oh yes. And they were, we were getting German shells from across the river. Oh. And we were returning artillery when we first got there. Well, let's see, was there a bridge across there or what? what? They were. They'd been working on the Romagan Bridge oh. and some others. So we were there about a week or two before we went online. And when we went online was to shift down the river a ways and then make a crossing on one of those pontoon bridges. Oh, yes. 
Well, let's see. They talked about the remog. I mean, was you there? Would you actually seen? They blew it up, but you seen it before it was blowing up, did you? No, it was already. It had been blown up. Oh, yeah. It had a replacement bridge there. Oh yeah. A pontoon bridge. I know they was talking about that. That was really a pretty important. Uh, oh yeah. Time. Boy. Yep. Well, let, let's see. Who do you remember? Who was your? You was the eighty-second, but was you assigned? Uh, Third Army or the First Army or anything? I was just checking that out. Oh, yeah. to, and we were in four different armies. Four? Yes. We'd shift uh, from one to the other from the time, and we were only in combat 30 days, the last 30 days of the war. Well, let's see, though, when did you get to uh, La Havre again? Uh, in uh, uh, March oh, yeah. of 45. Oh, yeah, and then, oh, yeah. So you said you used to combat, what, 30 days? 30 days. Oh, yeah. Well, and what, where do you actually figure you hit combat when you got to the... Well, as soon as we crossed the river. Oh, well, that? we were getting shells on the west side of the river, but the division didn't start really doing anything in, in the attack phase until we crossed the river. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I just thought maybe that's a bad question to have. Well, what is the feeling like? You know. You know, if you go on a cruise, you got a welcome committee over there. But gosh, when you got people firing at you, and you don't know where they might be. That's quite a, a feeling, isn't it? Or what? Yeah, yeah. That's you wonder. You wonder. I bet you do. But the Germans were on the retreat at oh. that point. Oh yeah. See, they'd been moved clear across their country. So, oh, yeah. uh, and actually, our first mission was to cut right through a pocket where they'd been in, they had been contained oh, uh, south and north and our mission was to cut right through the middle of that what they call the Ruhr pocket oh Ruhr pocket they call See, it the that's Ruhr. where a lot of industry is too. a lot of industry and a lot of soldiers oh. but they they'd been moving back been pushing them a long time so they were we wanted to keep them from getting organized, so oh, the theory see. was to go right through the middle of them and cut them in two. Oh, yeah. So it, they'd lose their ability to control and plan a defensive position. So we went through that rear pocket about like the U.S. Army went through Iraq when they made oh. their move. Uh -huh. oh. We wouldn't stop and fight anybody. they just go yes. and don't worry about what you leave behind, just keep the guys coming with a column. And it was mechanized for the most part. Unless they were stopped, they might stop temporarily for a combat area, but the idea was if you get if you get through, just keep right on going. Boy, that's, man, that, that, that's really, uh, gosh, when you, you got enemies on both sides. They don't, they don't train you that way when you're in school. That's not the school solution. They don't don't let anyone get behind you. Oh, keep clean up as you go. No, but of course we didn't have the full picture as what was going on. But theoretically, the enemy was disorganized enough that the commanders felt that this was a way to handle this problem, which worked out fine. But gosh, <clears throat> but boy, I don't know what kind of an area would you be going through? Was that kind of rural area? Or rural, but uh, mountainous. Oh, mountainous trees, narrow roads. Yeah, you didn't, you couldn't see anything. I guess for me, I'd been a little fearful of somebody up in the trees or they, Oh, and they were, of oh, course. Were. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see, what was you, was you in a Jeep or armored car or what do you remember? I had a, what they call a ton and a half. Oh, yeah. That's a six by six, oh, yeah. a Dodge. Yeah. And uh, so I had two of those and two six by sixes. And we hauled ammunition oh, I for see. the battalion. Oh yeah, oh yeah, boy, that was an important uh, part. Uh, getting to keeping them supply, you know, if they mm -hmm. if they couldn't get them supplies, gee, that was oh boy. Let's see, they talked about Cologne. Was that the place they had the two uh, steeples up there? Uh, I don't know, uh, the church there. That had, uh, of course, you didn't do much looking around when you come. I didn't see them, but we went back. Uh, been about. 
15 years ago now oh, on yes. tour uh -huh. and toured this route that we had taken. Oh, is that right? So we saw the, the uh, cathedral then. Oh, yes. And it wasn't touched, you know, they stayed away from it. Uh -huh. And it was a beautiful facility. Oh, yes. But I didn't, I didn't see it when we were there in Colorado. I'll, I'll bet you were. Look, I, I know that some of them have told the story about some of them are after war and pilots didn't have anything to do. One guy decided he was going to take his fighter plane and tilt it and go between them. <laughs> I guess they sent him home then. But that, I always, that's what I remember them talking about. Oh, come on. Now, let's see. Yeah, that Rhine River, that's a. That's really, uh, that really is an important river. For it's a wide them. river. Yeah. Very wide. And of course they talk about shipping barges and everything. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's uh, wider than the Mississippi at St. Louis. Oh, is that right? That, yeah. Gosh, yeah. How far, boy, how far, I don't suppose you remember how far across that was. No, but I just, because I saw it again, you know, 15 years ago, and it's wide. It's a wide river. Gosh, I'd be going across there when the war was going on. That, that just seemed like it'd been forever going across that. Yeah. Thing. Gosh. Yeah. Man. Boy. But you drove your ton and a half truck across there? Well, I had a driver. I oh, didn't drive. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. And that, that was just a, what you call a pontoon bridge, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that'd be kind of scary. <laughs> well, I, of course, I guess you had a lot, they didn't realize what all was going on. Well, let's see. Wait, now, then, that, that was the other thing. Well, you used to talk about going right through there. Is that a deal, but kind of like, remember the Battle of the Bulge? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that was that happened in December. Oh, yeah. And our division was slated to go to the Pacific. Oh, yeah. But when that happened, oh. then Eisenhower wanted a couple more divisions over there. Oh. Because he wasn't sure, you know, that they had a problem oh, yeah. with that. So we that's really the event that slated our division to go to Europe. Oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I didn't know if it was that a similar thing that happened that we went out to, I don't know if that, I don't know. If well, of course the Germans were trying to penetrate our line uh -huh. and get in behind us and cut off enough troops and continue with their offensive, but the Americans had enough, pulled enough people together and they got it stopped. Uh, but the Germans had shown enough uh, power to do what they did. Eisenhower got concerned how much other power they had oh, yes. as we were getting closer to Berlin. Uh -huh. So that's when he got on the horn and said, "I'd like to have a couple more divisions here because we could we could have a could be get getting worse." Oh yes. So. Boy, that took a little while. That's when all of our because this happened in Christmas time. Yes, yeah, you're right. And we didn't. Leave California till uh, in February. Oh, so. And then you didn't get to La Harve until when was it? No, it was uh, March or January, February, March. Sometime in March, late March. Oh yeah. We didn't go online until uh, April. April. April the fourth. Oh yeah. And let's see. But this takes time, you know. Oh, well, I would think so. Again. But I. Also, he was concerned that he had a lot of units that fought all the way from oh, yes. Normandy, and they just needed some relief. Oh, I, so we relieved two other divisions when we got there with oh. the 97th as well as our 86th. Let's see, what, what was your patch? Uh, you said, uh, I, I don't know, remember my patches on all that. It's a black hawk. It's a red patch with the black symbol of, of a hawk. Oh, yeah. And it looked like an old night hawk. Well, yeah. See the airborne, they had something. It was. It wasn't. They had another. I don't know. They had a patch too. They had it's a lighter pla color patch, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Yeah. Well, let's see. We better get on down the river. I see. Where are we at? Oh, we we're in the Roar now. Uh, uh, Roar Pocket. Roar Pocket. Yeah. Uh, we went through there, and then moved on into what they call the Bavarian uh, 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 yeah. Well, that's a sector effort. Which was a communist section of Germany, which was called Bavaria. Uh -huh. Bavaria, you heard the Bavarian Alps. Yeah, we could see the Alps from that position. Okay. But we were in the flatland. But where, do you remember any of the towns you might have been in? That oh, yeah. I really don't. You know, I really don't. Of course, you apparently moving pretty fast. Just, you? just 
Yeah, they're just so fast that you just, you didn't stay anywhere. Oh, is that right? Until we got to uh, Austria, we ended, ended up in Salzburg, Austria. Oh, yes, uh-huh. That's where we stopped. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Oh, so actually, is that when you, was the Russians there? That, oh. Russians were 25 miles away, and yeah, that was the end of the war right there. We were just near uh, the Purchase Garden, Hitler's oh. winter yeah. hideout. Eagle's Nest. Eagle's Nest. I don't suppose you, <laughs> you had a chance to see that. Some of the guys did, but I didn't get oh, to go. Right? And I, I went back when we went back 15 oh. years ago and made the trip up oh. the mountain. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I, I'll bet that was interesting. Oh, it really was. Uh, but, of course, it's probably hard to visualize what it was like, uh, what, how many years before that, 30 or 40 years before? Did you see what you went over? 40. That, see how service was there in 40, 45. So I was back there in 70. 70, oh yeah, boy. Yeah, there's been a lot. Hey, no, it was 80, 80, oh. 80, 90, 90, 90. Yeah, more like 90. Oh. Late 80s, 90s, early 90s. And then plus, it's pretty hard probably to even see any scars of the war, too, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Germany, uh, I didn't see, but very few. In Cologne, they purposely left some buildings oh, uh, not fixed up. Oh, yeah. You just saw a hole in the ground and, and mortar and oh. stone. Matter of fact, the, right beside where we stayed in the hotel was left as a memorial to a, the war. That's in Cologne now? In Cologne. Oh. Had it fenced off with snow fence. Oh, uh -huh. <clears throat> just a jagged hole, and, but everything else was yes, brand new. Oh, yeah. You couldn't see any yeah. effects at all. Of course, I always say that. That, that was kind of like, uh, you remember when they put town center in down here, uh, the mall, and they had <coughs> to decide who was going to get, uh, how much they were going to get for property. Now, during the war, there wasn't any argument about uh, <laughs> what they was going to pay for the land or <laughs> what have you. But, uh, yeah. Well, let's see. So you say Salzburg is where you have come up with to the uh, mm -hmm. Russians then? Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't see them. Oh, you didn't? But they were close. Oh, you were? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. <clears throat> let's see. And, and that would that have been, I see, what is that? Uh, VE Day was about May. What's this was May the 3rd, I believe. That... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, then, did it just come to abrupt halt? Yeah, we were just. We were moving. We never got to in Salzburg yet. We were at the outskirts, and the uh, word was shut her down and camp out wherever you are. Oh yeah. We were on a just big old round hill and meadow area, and so we just stopped and and bivouacked in that spot. Oh yeah. Well, what did you uh, how, or how long was you in that spot then? Till they, or what? Well, I got a. I don't know just how it worked out, but for some reason or other, I got a chance to go back to Paris. Oh. With a crew was going back, and they offered me if I wanted to go. Oh, yeah. So I packed up my gear and, and uh, everything I had, and the idea was to go back to Paris for, I think, three or four days and meet the division back at La Havre. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Or actually, Mannheim, that's where we're, the town where we were came into and, and kind of left there. So, kind of a quick deal. And our, at that point, the division already had out, got orders to go back to the States. What? We, we were the first division to go back to leave the... How soon after uh, VE Day, uh, May? Oh, a week or two. Oh, is that, oh boy. Yeah, we is were, they knew it. They had that plan well ahead of time. Boy, yeah. Before we leave Germany, maybe we ought to get, get into that, uh, Luger and your uh, equipment there you brought, especially that there. Okay, here's, let's do them in order. Okay, yeah. This is what the storybooks talk about, the cat of nine tails. One, two, really? three, four. This is only seven. Oh, uh, what'd you call it again? Cat, cat of nine tails. And it's just... <laughs> it's a whip that they... Now, I, I got this in the store. Oh. I looted this oh, in the yeah. store. <laughs> we won't tell on. And I see that the date on it is 1937 and the name of the store. Oh, is it? Uh, so this 
didn't say in Germany. I don't think it had been used. Oh, it was it was brand new. It, you didn't say warehouse in Germany, or you said uh, what the Yeah, name? it's got the name of the town. Probably hard to read, yeah. Oh, Friedenstadt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just interested because of the storybooks I'd read. Oh, yeah. And it was brand new. They were for sale in the yes, store. So I don't know where the market was, oh, yeah. whether the civilization still used them or not. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, th I didn't want to use it in the concentration camps for a while. Well, I, I really don't oh, know. Yeah. I don't. Oh, they very well could have. Oh, yeah. Oh. But this didn't come from a concentration camp. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, back to that. What, what town did you, you remember what town you got? I don't remember the town. Oh. It was a fairly big city, oh, yeah. a big store. But, I mean, is this after the war, or, I mean... No, we were in combat. Oh, you were? Yeah, just going through town. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't suppose you had too much time to do much sightseeing or <laughs> shopping. Had to go through... <laughs> no, I didn't shop. <laughs> I, I guess they didn't take uh, Discover or Visa cards, did they? No, no. <laughs> well, talking about that, what did you use for money then, or...? Well, oh, I didn't buy this. I took it. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Spoils of war. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything was wide open. It no, oh. the clerk wasn't there. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was, the town was abandoned. Oh, I see. Hmm. Gosh, that, that is great that uh, how you, you just happened to walk into, did you know any particular store or what you? No, you just walking down the street and the store was there with all the windows broke out of it oh. and you just reached in and got it. Got it. Oh, gosh. Boy, you know, that's the first one I've ever seen like that. Is that right? I, I've heard of them. I'd never seen one. I never either. Gosh, that, that, that is a... <laughs> oh, this, yeah. this is a... I got this from a German SS trooper. Uh, we were going through a small town and had stopped. This was when we were moving pretty fast and taking a lot of prisoners. Oh, yeah. A lot of prisoners soldiers and uh, walking down out of the mountains on the trail was... Talking about taking prisoners, what, what do you do when you take, or what was that, what, what you had done? Well, they were just came in groups, oh, and we that? just said, go on down the road, go back where we just came from, head down the road. You know, someone will catch you down the road. Oh, I... And they sent a soldier or two with them just to keep them oh. moving. Oh, yeah, they wouldn't have put up much resistance. They were... Young fellows and old fellows. Oh. I say young, teenagers, and old fellows, probably 40, 50, 60 year old soldiers, but really haggard, oh. uh, dirty, hungry, tired. Oh. They were in bad shape. Oh, is there? Bad shape. But then, in contrast to that, coming out of the mountain trail was about six SS troopers. Oh, that's a Six foot six, oh, spit yeah. and spolish, and oh, come down, call him left, oh, left face. And he walked up to me and saluted me and, oh. and handed me his looter. Is that right? That's from an SS? Yeah. Sure. It, oh, I thought that'd been the last one of the, boy, then, oh, is that? Well, you don't remember now where you might have been on this? I don't remember the town. Oh, yeah. Boy, you. Well, how big a group was it in this SS group? Just six guys. Six guys, oh yeah. But see, they, the way that, as I understand it, the, uh, the process there was the SS troopers would keep the regular army guys fighting. They wouldn't let them retreat. Oh. Or abandon. Uh -huh. If they did, well, they'd kill them. Oh. So that's what they were there for. Exactly. They weren't fighting. The SS troopers were keeping an eye on the soldiers, keeping them organized. And that was kind of uh, what we call the elite uh, soldiers of the... Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yep. Well, like this fellow, uh, how old a fellow was he? You know? Oh, they were, I suppose, in their 20s, mid-20s. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Good-looking guys, you oh, know, I'll, healthy. Oh, yeah, I'll bet they were. So, Someone that really knows guns told me that this was actually used in World War I. Oh, is that right? Uh, I, I've never shot it. 
And now let's say we what do you is that a German Luger or what do you That's call a German it? Luger. You don't know what the caliber is. that don't make any difference either, but that it's uh it's unique in that the oh. that the oh. uh, the shell has got two diameters to it. It's uh the casing part is bigger than the than the cartridge than the than the bullet. Oh, is that right? So it's a special and I've taken those, taken the shells out of my magazine. I can't find them. <laughs> I put them away so I wouldn't be shooting somebody. Oh, oh yeah. But it's very unique in that respect. Oh, that's the magazine. That this probably, is, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, probably it wasn't a whole six or eight. Uh, oh, that's my, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And uh, that's right. Uh, hmm. Well, that that thing hasn't been used a whole lot, ever. I don't think so. I don't I think so. Oh, I don't. Man, that, that and in itself just to get in a Luger, but then to I, I just have your have an SS trooper give that to you. He he just uh, <laughs> I can tell you haven't been used that lately. <laughs> oh, hmm. Figure out how to do that. Oh well, yeah, but uh, yeah, well, we can do that later. Yeah, but uh, that that is. Uh, Really, is something to think that you got it off of an SS trooper here too. Then, as we went in the first night, we were free. I walked into into uh, uh, in Austria to uh, oh. Salzburg. Oh yes. And the first the German civilian came up to me and handed me this pistol. What was that? Thirty-two caliber. A what? Thirty-two oh. caliber pistol. You mean, uh, uh, but that was no magazine. No magazine. Oh, you mean it sh should have one, but yeah. It, oh, yeah. Huh. But apparently they had been told to turn in all their weapons. Oh, yes. So he, that was the first guy I saw. Is that right? Of course, the other thing is, gosh, you, you didn't have a whole lot of <laughs> uh, room to, you had your own equipment and things. That, that was quite a chore to find a place to put that, you know. And how well, you, I had the trucks, you know. Had this yeah, two and a half, ton and a half yeah. truck. Yeah, but then you still when you then when they shipped you out of Germany, you had uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you did uh, you did pretty well loaded down. Had to figure out a way. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that that really is interesting about them uh, guns, and, and especially the fact. I mean, I've heard of people buying them for almost anything, but gosh, to get one off of a. Germans yeah. and a SS trooper guy say yep. they was really bad. And then uh, that younger fellow, boy, that, but th that's getting pretty well at the end of the war, though. Yeah, see, that was probably midway. That was probably two weeks before the end of the war. Oh, I see. Oh. See, they they knew they were whipped. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they were looking for a quick way out. Yeah. But back that thing on the prisoners, boy, you, you took a lot. A lot of oh, them. thousands of them. Is that right? Thousands of them. I, and, and I think I saw a number of 30,000 or so is there? in the division. Because we were just on one spot. Yeah, I know it. And the division was spread out over a, a wider front. So they were covering a, probably a 20, 30 mile front as they were moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. That would have been them made you wonder what they did. I mean, they had to have a staging area for them, uh, POWs in or what they, but you yeah. didn't have it. I never saw really what they did with them, but I, from what I read, they, read, they, they just f kind of took a temporary fence in a big oh. enclosure and corralled them in there and then, and no doubt turned them loose oh, yeah. pretty quick because, you know, what are you going to do with that many people? That's what I And thought. the war was over. Yeah, that's what I Within thought. a couple of weeks. Would have thought so too, and they probably were uh, probably pretty well run right down. Let's see, I don't know, uh, it would be interesting to hear what you did in Paris. I don't know if you want to tell us all of what you did in Paris. <laughs> but uh, well, what was it like to be, to be in Paris? Or? Uh, it was, Paris was, uh, seemed to be normal, uh, you know, it was a lot of activity. I went to theater one night, oh, yeah. then I arranged to have dinner with the French family. Oh, you know, through the USO organization, oh. you told them ahead of time what you'd like to do and they set it up. Oh, I so see. these folks lived in a 
apartment oh, in Paris, downtown Paris, and had me over for dinner. Oh, but I didn't talk French, <laughs> and they didn't talk That's what I was English, so it was kind of a cool <laughs> evening. Oh, yeah. But we had a nice meal. It was a small apartment, but well furnished. And I enjoyed the evening. Well, I think that would be a good way to get the feeling of the French mm -hmm. people in Paris to actually go in their home and be different. They took you down to the cafe or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I see Paris, was it really hit very hard? The war? No, not really. No. no, you know, see, they surrendered, you know, pretty quick, yeah. so there wasn't any damage there. No. Did you go? Uh, of course, they always talk about what's that main street in uh, Paris, uh, Champs. I went to the uh, cathedral, the big cathedral. Oh, in Notre Dame. Or Notre yeah. Oh, yes. It's right on the is it the Seine River. Oh, yes. It's right. right on the bank. I yeah. walked that area and oh. picked up some mementos in a curio shop uh -huh. and the Eiffel Tower. Oh, it, yes. It, Did you get to go up on it? I didn't go up oh. on it, but I went to the base of it. Oh, saw yeah. it. That probably was shut down. Mm -hmm. Sure. Hey, uh, that was a uh, year the construction visit. You probably would appreciate it a little. And then, of course, then they had the uh, what's the end of uh, the shops? That big tower. I can't even think of it. Uh, shops, you ladies. Wasn't that where they had a big tower or something? I don't know. Stone tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. how long did you stay in uh, Paris? I think three or four days. Oh, is that right? Yeah. But yeah. like when you went to Paris, uh, of course, maybe there uh, wasn't anything. I mean, did you have some French money on you? Or, 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 or America? I must have converted. Oh, yeah. Well, now back to money, then. <laughs> how often were you paid in the Army? Or, you know, or, 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 you know, I don't remember getting paid over there. Oh, is that? I don't remember getting paid over oh, there. That's what I was wondering if, uh, of course, I guess you wouldn't have. Had I wondered about that. If, uh, I really, I really forget just what I did for money. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, if you was in war, you wouldn't have really been in uh, need of uh, money, though. You don't need it, you know. Just they, army feeds you and oh, yeah. bed you down. Yeah. Yeah. You don't talk about I me. Mean, that's getting pretty personal, but. Gosh, how was that though? You know, you would you have a chance to change clothes or have a shower or sleep or how, how long would you? What was the days? Uh, you know, you worked more than eight hours a day, no doubt. I mean, typical when you read in combat. When we were on our maneuvers, we would we travel until depending on that light. Of course, we were in blackout conditions. You couldn't have lights, so they'd travel as late at night as they could see and without lights. They'd use blackout lights some. So eight, nine o'clock at night before you stop, and uh, you'd get up in the morning at five o'clock or something and roll again. It was, you were just, well, then you just didn't kill up, you. Set up your own tents, did you? No, you, you didn't, set up, didn't have time to set up tents. No, you just ate. Uh, of course, we would at night. We'd normally be in a German's home. Oh, uh huh. We just commandeer a house. Oh, uh huh. And uh, you maybe do some cooking there. Oh. Or you'd have rations that you'd eat out of your own sea rations oh, or boy. whatever you were carrying with you. But you go inside. And, and you may get a bed, you may not. You may go to the attic and sleep in the attic. But you could, um, most of the soldiers got inside of a home. They just oh. take a, take over a home. Oh, yeah, that, I guess I would be, and then of course that was. But uh, the other thing is, did you, was there ever such a thing as a hot meal? I mean, you know, you got some sea rations, but. No, we never had a hot meal during the time we were in combat. Is that right? No, not till the war was over. Is that right? Or before it started, you know, before we went into combat. Oh, yeah. I see. That. I see. They call it, what is it, C ration or what they call it? Yeah. yeah, C was a can of food, just a steel can, about so high. And uh, then the uh, plastic container, what they call that, a D, was a little box. 
about 10 inches long, about an inch and a half thick, and about four inches wide, would have the dry perishables in it. They'd be sealed. Dry, so, what do you call it? Well, bread, oh. crackers, oh. Uh, dried dried food, stuff that would, would keep sealed like that. Oh. Well, uh, how, uh, what was that? Some of the uh, menu you might have had, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, oh. A lot of crackers, oh. <laughs> and some with the, some with sweet crackers and salt crackers, and uh, prunes, dried prunes, oh. stuff like that. Uh, and you'd have some powdered, like for coffee or oh, yeah. tea that you could pour in hot water uh, to make a hot drink if you were where you could get some hot water. Yeah, that's just what I was going to ask you. <laughs> but you normally wouldn't. Yeah, I didn't know what, what you could get. <laughs> so, some guys talked, that was in uh, Persian Gulf, some of the guys said he'd hold a cup over the exhaust or something to get Yeah. Something. But, well, that, of course, the other thing is to find water along the way, too, you know, I mean, you know, that wasn't exact. Well, of course, you carry, we, we were in vehicles, so you carry a good supply of that kind of stuff. You oh, just, I see. You don't leave until that stuff is charged. And uh, and keep in mind, we were just moving all of the time. Gee. So it was a very abnormal kind of an infantry maneuver. Uh, most of the time we were moving, we I just read where we did in a two day period of time, they went over 225 miles is that right? driving. And that's almost, that's continuous driving. Boy, and that wasn't the best of roads. And then if you had some bridges blowed out or, gosh, that's a really much. Yeah, but see, we were, we were ahead of anything they could do. Oh. I mean, we were just, caught them. They didn't have a chance to demolish stuff. Oh, yeah. This was where we were just going to cut them in two and, and separate them as a unit. Yes. And. But now back to that thing, supplies, you know, that, that was important too, but at the same time too, where, where'd you pick up your supplies? They was back, uh, some of them. Well, we had two six by sixes yeah. full of, and it, it was a six by loaded, twice as what it's normally designed to carry. Oh yeah. It's too, too much of a load that couldn't put your hoop, your <laughs> metal stays down for the canvas. You get picked up or overloaded, did you? You just had to throw a tarp over that whole load. It was. They call it a two and a half ton truck, but <laughs> we had to have ten tons of stuff on there. Well, guys, what did you, uh, you had? You said you had ammunition you had to take up to. Yeah, for the battalion. Yeah. Reserve. Said, reserve. Yeah, but there's a lot of different. Some of them wanted pistols. Some are. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's a, uh, a mortar shells, yeah. uh, artillery shells, rifle, rifle shells, the whole gamut, whatever the battalion uses. But it was they telling you ahead of what you was needing or something or well, uh, well, well, talk about that. How about communications? Could you communicate? Did, you didn't have cell phones. No, uh, I didn't have any way to communicate uh, except I stayed pretty close to where the battalion commander was. Oh yeah. Because <clears throat> and he would, he was my boss. Oh yeah. Uh, I was what they called an ammunition and pioneer platoon. Oh wow. Ammunition because we hauled ammunition for the battalion. Uh, Pioneer is it? We had uh, we carried mine detectors, oh. ground mine detectors. Our job would be to if there was mines, uh, had to go ahead and locate those mines and remove them, or do some light demolition work. We carried some dynamite. And uh, what do you mean? Would that be like blowing up a bridge or something? Or what would that well, be? or. Uh, <coughs> What, uh, what we, one of the chores was uh, the Germans had cut some trees down. Oh. Or they fell across the road. Oh, yes. So the troops couldn't get through because oh, yes. they had conventional trucks. Uh -huh. So I took my guys up with chainsaws oh. to cut the trees up and get them out of the way. Oh, yes. Now the Germans put a rifleman firing shots yes. 
where the trees were. So, and that was, that was the one time when I knew someone was shooting at me when we were working those trees. But he was across the valley with a sharpshooter, so his accuracy was real good. He didn't hit anybody. But I heard the bullets go by until we got those trees off the road so the troops could, could go down the mountain yeah. road and get down into the valley. That's what I always hear them talk about the CBs or the combat engineer. They, you guys actually had. Well, we were miniature CBs, you oh. might say. We yeah. we had the mine, the mine detectors and explosives and tools. We had chainsaws and shovels and picks, and we could dig a dig a privy for you if you need one. <laughs> oh, a fox hole. Uh, <laughs> light, very light engineer kind of work, but, and I think maybe that's. Maybe why I got that job you asked earlier. Oh, I think my vocation, oh. since we were had used explosives uh, oh, yeah. in the business in the crushing oh, rock, yeah. oh, yeah. that I did familiar with explosives. Oh. That perhaps that yeah. led me into this job. I don't know that. But the other thing is, you guys had to be up ahead, and I mean, uh, just like what you was talking. To. Well, we didn't get out ahead unless they called us and said, "Hey, oh. <laughs> we need you." Normally we'd be back of the oh, lead troops. Oh yeah. Unless they found something they needed us for. Oh yeah. So we had a, we had a, we weren't on the front lines. We were back one notch. Yeah. But from the front lines. Other line. times you would be up there though. Well, we could like be. Just like that trees. Yeah. Or, or either that or maybe a bridge was blowing up and you had to put, uh, oh yeah. But boy, back to them supplies though, how, you have any idea? You know, like if you was up here, and then how far back did you have to go to get... You know, we never went back for supplies. Oh, you didn't? Because the units themselves carry supplies for each uh, uh, cannon company. And the infantry units carry their own 31 millimeter and 60 millimeter shells. So we had the reserve supply. When they run out of their initial supply, they come to us. And we had no trouble. They weren't using enough, but what we had to go back for anymore oh, is that right? in my unit, oh, yes. in our battalion, so it wasn't a problem. Oh, they were, well, how about gasoline, or that was out of your uh, point? Uh, they would, uh, each night we'd stop, we would, a gas truck would come up oh, is that and right? fuel us, and that's one of the things that you had to make sure it was done before you kicked off the next day. I was wondering how, they, I thought maybe they did it from them, was them five gallon cans or Jerry? Well, that's the way they carry it. Oh, oh is that yeah, right? Yeah, oh, five oh. gallon cans. Is that right? But every, there was some, we didn't carry any reserve fuel, but some guys did. There was a unit that carried some. Now, I don't know how much they carry, but that's one of the problems by moving so fast, how you can keep up, but I don't know that we ever stopped because of shortage of fuel. Is it, or supplies. Huh? Or some, any supplies. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Man, that, uh, that, that takes a real coordination to oh, yeah. get that. Uh, and I don't know where, where they was picking them supplies up. Well, they just keep falling behind, you know. They keep and they, had they keep moving their depots up as the front moves. They just, they have other troops that are back there moving that stuff to keep up with the movement. Man, you talk about how many how many vehicles you guys had and uh, tank. I guess you had some tanks too, or what? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, and them, them little babies didn't run on just a little bit of gas but, or fuel, whatever it was. And gosh, that was. Well, let's see. How about breakdowns? Then maybe I shouldn't bring that up. But you know, would you? Uh, we didn't have any is breakdowns. That, is that right? That I uh, that I was aware of, not in. In my, keep in mind though, you're just in one spot, yeah, you know, and you don't know what's going on over the hill. And I, I'm a member, I joined there. We have an association that was formed after the war. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And I'm learning more about what happened <laughs> when I go to those meetings, talk to guys that were over the hill. Oh. And uh, we had no way of knowing it where oh. we were, except what we saw. Boy, somebody did a good job of planning that. I mean, you know, there's so many for supplies and so many yeah. troops yeah. up front. And yeah, it's very, they're very well organized, flexible, flexible and 
coordinated. But I thought maybe your trucks would run into some uh, flat tires or something. You never knew what you might uh, be traveling over or anything. Well, we were on roads most of the time. Sometimes you have to get off the road. But uh, every so often, most of the trucks, some of the trucks had winches on the front of them. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So they could pull themselves out. And if another guy got stuck, they'd turn around and winch him out of a hole. Oh. So you had some support there for... So they actually used them winches. Oh, they? yeah, you oh, bet. Is that right? You bet. Oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> but uh, it still amazes me. You said, really, you, you was talking earlier about that you would uh, go until dark, and then the next morning you'd go be up and gone by 6 or 7, seven o'clock. Or, gee, gosh, I, I don't see it. Uh, there wasn't a, <laughs> you didn't get any rest. Or the any. battalion commander would have a meeting every night about nine, ten o'clock oh and have the plans for the next day. So he'd he'd meet with the all the company commanders. Oh yeah. And there'd be eight or ten guys in the meeting that would he'd assign responsibilities for the next day. And he would tell you now we're going up this road or that road or something. Or yeah, well, he, of course, my uh, I would just stay right with headquarters with him, just behind him. And uh, if he needed me to do anything or any of my guys, he would he'd be close at hand. They could get a runner to me and tell me what they wanted me to do. Oh, we, but gosh, you know, like uh, we go on a trip or something, we go to AAA and take this route and that one. <laughs> I don't think that you had a triple A then. No, but they had maps ahead. Oh, they did? They'd put a map on the board. Oh, is that right? And you're here, and here's where we're going tomorrow. Oh. Our, our uh, goal tomorrow is to be here, and here's the route we're going to take. Well, how about that? So you say, how many miles you... Well, I just read, oh, yeah. just in the book, I just was reading to kind of bone up for this meeting today. It's over 200 miles a day? in a couple of days. Oh. That, that's, that's almost continuous driving. Now that was, obviously there was not much resistance. At least enough resistance to stop the column. Oh, yeah. But this isn't to say you wouldn't have some people firing on you. Oh, yeah. But they knew there was not enough resistance to... to wait for to get oh, uh, oh boy that guys just to uh, travel we're gonna probably need to take a break oh, okay say Bert maybe we ought to go back and get that you talked about the mines and how you detected them and and uh, that, that was really uh, pretty cool when we got first landed in France at La Harve the coast line was lined with with uh, mines now these are Mind if you step on them, they'll go off. Oh. It's so big around, with the top head about This mine. wasn't in the ocean, but this would be out on the land. On the land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we we used that as a place to, to experiment mm -hmm. with active mines. So you go out there with this electronic wand kind of a deal and spot it electronically as you know it's right there in the ground. And then the method of removal is to uh, lay on your belly with your uh, bayonet <clears throat> as a tool and reach over and just gradually clean the dirt off the top of it. How deep would they be covered? Oh, well, they'd just be under the surface of the ground, see, just have loose dirt over the top of them. So you could kick the top off and uh, find the handle and take a rope and put the rope around the handle and get back over in another one that you've just, a cavity that's where you've blown one out uh -huh. and pull on a rope and pull this one out of the hole because it might be hooked to a personnel, at a personnel mine. So you want to be in a protected area in case it goes off. Oh yeah. You pull it out in the open and move it, then you know that it's not going to go off and then it's, it's okay to go up to it and you can pick it up and take it somewhere to a storage area. Gosh, now, uh, boy, you, you had to be a little ways, of, boy, that, uh, how close could you be? In, well, or, you'd be away probably 20 feet. Oh. <clears throat> if it went off, you'd feel a concussion and be noisy, but 
<coughs> it was, it's in a hole and you're in a hole, so it's not going to get any, you're not going to get any. But no doubt there's a number of guys that got to hit with them mines. Or oh yeah, you bet. Oh my God. You bet. Let's see, we, we better keep going. We got you in Paris now. I guess we got you home. Now, now where'd you go when you left, uh, you left Germany then? Or? We came back to the States, had a uh, couple of weeks off. And where'd you leave from Germany at? Lee Harv again? Lee Harv, oh, Old Gold. What? Camp Old, Old Gold. Oh, yeah. Same spot. Yeah. And uh, came back to New York, landed in New York. Oh, yeah. Then from there we got two weeks off, uh -huh. came back home, and regrouped in Camp Gruber, Oklahoma, hmm. as a to do some retraining for the Pacific. Oh, yeah. Let's see, were, were you married before you went over? Yes, I got married before well, before we, about a short year before I left school. Oh, yes, uh-huh, yeah. yeah. See, talking about that, <laughs> were you able to correspond with your wife, or was it, what about mail, or was it? Well, no mail while we were in combat exactly. at all. Uh, but after that, the mail had piled up, so we, we got mail distribution oh, yeah. after combat was over. Well, let's see, did you get to see your wife then when you got back to New yeah. York? Oh, yeah. yeah, we got two weeks off. Oh, oh yeah. And then, and then how long was you in uh, what Camp Gruber? About a month and a half in oh, yeah. Camp Gruber. Oh, yeah. And then shipped to California and shipped out to the Pacific, heading for the Philippine Islands. Oh, yes. And uh, thank goodness they dropped the bomb, oh. the bombs. Uh, we were probably three or four days uh, on, on, on the ocean when they dropped well, them. on the ocean then. When they dropped them. Well, what, you know, how you was going for the Philippines, how close to the Philippines do you suppose you were? Or a day or two or two days? Oh, no, it's about a three week trip. Oh to the Philippines. We thought they'd turn the ships around and come back to the stage, but they didn't. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah. No, we went on to the Philippines and spent a year over there in occupation duties. Oh, in the Philippines. Yep. Well, let's see, though. Would that have been, yeah, that was in the Japanese area, but I mean. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, the, oh, the Japanese had taken over the Philippines. <coughs> yeah, oh, but the war was over there. Yeah. See, they had left, they were out of the Philippines. And that was one of the first places that the United States took back from the Japanese. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's where MacArthur's headquarters were, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have a chance to see them or ever? No. Uh, no, there was... Uh, if he was still operating out of the Philippines, I was not aware of it. Oh, we yeah. didn't see any indications. We were camped. Uh, near Manila, oh, uh, in a we relieved a 82nd division who come back to the states and they fought the battle in in the Philippines, so we took over the campsite they were in. Oh, I see. So uh, it was out of Manila, oh, 15, 20 miles oh. in the foothills of the mountains. Let's see, maybe we better get your bayonet out of there before we forget that. <laughs> That's the most important part. You, you tell us about that. Now this is a uh, a bayonet fits on the rifle. Oh. This is where it oh, so clips on the yeah. Oh, yeah. end of the rifle. And this is a Japanese one, is that right? Yeah. Oh. And I didn't take this away from anybody. <laughs> you didn't. Uh, I found it somewhere, I forget just where I picked it up, in the Philippines. Uh -huh. But there was, you know, that was a heavily fought area, a oh. lot of a lot of Japanese there. Oh, so there actually was used, I mean, they... Oh, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Yeah. Well, that looks like a pretty good piece of, uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Matt, see, where, 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 oh, see, they slipped on the... That yeah, this, they clipped it. On your rifle, it's got a little lug that sticks oh, yeah. in there, and then this another knob that uh, fits through here. Just you just clip it on, and it becomes a 
sturdy piece right on the end of the rifle. Oh, yeah. Mm. I said you. Huh. But uh, so you just picked that up there, yeah. Yep. Of course, uh, you had, did you have your bayonets to, you know, the regular army? Had yeah, them? ours weren't that long. That's what I was thinking about. Ours were about, yeah. about this long. And you carried that on your belt, uh -huh. on your ammunition belt. Oh yeah. So, so you don't really know the history of this. No, I really don't. What? Uh, where did uh, you put uh, it? Look there. Uh, yeah, you think that's, mm -hmm. that's? Oh yeah, that is a neat one. Huh? Well, uh, let's see though. Oh well, you did uh, actually see some Japanese people then. I mean, or uh, soldiers, I should. Or well, wow, they would have been POWs then. Yeah. I, my job, one of my jobs in the Philippines was to kind of manage a civilian labor camp. These are Filipinos that work for the army uh -huh. in the division area to do cooking work and clean up work and so forth. And I suppose I had a hundred or so Filipinos. Oh yeah. But then, and I also had some Japanese POWs. Oh yeah that looked after and did the, oh, the yeah. grunt work yeah. in the Filipino labor camp. Oh, yeah. Cooked and those kind of things. So I got a good chance to work with both the Filipinos as well as the Japanese POWs. Well, gosh, how, how long was the POWs the Japanese? I mean, I didn't see me on They weren't, uh, well, I don't know what they did, but I don't remember them in Germany, and that's what I was wondering, how long they kept the POWs in, uh, in no, I don't really know. They were there as long as I was, oh, there. was there, and I spent a year. Oh, you did in this camp area. Oh, yeah. Of course, there was a whole year. You know, that was a little bit different. Yeah. And interesting, uh, you heard of Corregidor Island. Oh yeah. I, one of the more fun parts of the trip there was to spend some time on Corregidor. Oh, uh, I went over and and was stationed there for a part of the time. How far from the Philippines are my geography? Well, it's just it's just right in the harbor. Oh, it is. When the ships come into the harbor to Manila, they come right past Corregidor Island. That was the fortress to protect the enemy from getting into the harbor. Oh. So it was geared up with big heavy cannons, and it was a defensive position during the war. A lot of heavy cannons permanently mounted up in the mountains and overlooking the inlet to the Manila Bay. Well, let's see, was there very much more damage there then, or did they, of course they Yeah, it had been heavily shelled, oh, yeah. a lot of underground uh, caverns where they stored ammunition and so forth, and uh, and a lot of soldiers stationed there. If you read the story of Bataan, when the Japanese took over, that they had a big fight for Corregidor, and yeah. took it, and then they took went to the mainland from Corregidor. Let's see, was Corregidor about one of the first ones they... Or what was? I don't remember. I think when the Japanese came back. They, I think they took Corregidor first. That's what I was saying. And then went to the mainland. Yeah. Started yeah. shelling the mainland from Corregidor. In fact, uh, Wainwright. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. Was, was he on Corregidor anyway? He. He was in charge of the troops there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I see. What was that death march they went on? I see. Uh, oh yeah, clear from like, near Corregidor, clear to the on. Up country to the yeah, I read some read a book on that. Not only this death march, but the recovery of the POWs. There's a book oh. written about the the effort that the Americans made to get to the POW camp and save the POWs before the before the Japanese lost the war oh. because they were afraid they were going to go in there and kill all the POWs. Quite a story. Very interesting story. And then plus, of what kind of shape them American POWs? Oh boy, made. they were. Oh my gosh. Bad conditions. And then uh, you hear them talk about that march too. That gosh, they, they, boy, you know, you didn't have much. Oh, uh, no shoes. No sh oh, oh man. Oh yeah, that's terrible. Good. That's probably one of the more vicious stories that you read about the war. Gosh, oh, man, there wasn't too many of them left. Tell about it. A lot, of them, lot of them died. Gee. A lot of them died. I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, Okinawa, were you very close to that? Or? No. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, well, that's where Bernie Pyle got it. But, oh, yeah. Well, let's mm -hmm. see. Uh, where was the. Uh, 
Missouri when they, you know, they saw, isn't that where they signed the peace treaty or well, whatever, surrender? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. It was close to Japan, though, wasn't it? That's what I was thinking. I, I must. Uh, but I, I remember. I'm not sure where it was. Oh, yeah. I was just curious if uh, you uh, were there. But you, but you was, <laughs> that's right. You said you was kind of in the middle of the Pacific when the bombs were dropped in, weren't you? Oh, we were just almost within eyesight of the States oh. when they dropped the bomb. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, uh, what was the reaction then on the ship when you guys heard that? The oh, they were just, of course, tickled to death, you oh. know. Oh, yeah. We were, I found out later, our division was slated to be one of the invading divisions in the mainland. Is that right? That was, we were on the board to fill that slot. Oh. So that would have been a, that would have been a toughie. That would have been. Boy, you don't know whether you could have made it all that. That's what I... Yeah. Uh, of course, bringing that up, uh, uh, Truman, uh, what, do you think he made the right decision on that? I think he did. Hmm. I think he did. Yeah. Because the Japanese, they just wouldn't quit, you know. Yeah. They would, they're, up to this point, they refused to even, uh, to, to be taken prisoner. Oh, yeah. Because they had been told, as I understand it, that uh, the Americans would kill him anyway. Oh. So why let him take you as a prisoner? So commit suicide or whatever, and that's what they were doing in most places. So they were slated to probably do that on the mainland. Of course, maybe it's like, I never thought about that. I read just something recently on that. They save lives, and not only save American lives, but a lot of Japanese do probably know. Yeah, you know, sure. That, oh, yeah, because they'd have been bombed to pieces, you know. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, you bet they would have been. Well, I, I just, uh, man, uh, and they he gave them a warning, too, didn't they? I mean, yep. you know, that, that gave them a chance, yeah. Yeah, and I should. Man, that's, uh, that really is something. But, uh, so, uh, yeah, so actually, I guess you wasn't in the... Uh, the POW Japanese is the only Japanese you really, uh, right? Yeah, you know, of course they would have been. Uh, did you pick up any uh, Japanese then, or are you? Or you mean language? No. Oh yeah. No. Oh. Yeah. But they were easy to talk, easy to communicate with. You just looked at them and point to what you wanted done, and <laughs> they do it. Is that right? They just. Oh yeah. Real alert. Oh yeah. Real uh, attentive. Yeah. No, but like them POWs, I suppose you had all age groups there, from uh, what what was the youngest to the oldest, would you say? Yeah. You know, that's hard to tell the age of a Japanese oh, oh, person. Yeah. Really hard. They were they were all uh, good workers, oh, yeah. all right on top of it. Yeah. One of them took it. I didn't bring it, but. Uh, took the 155 millimeter howitzer shell, they uh, spent casing, and he cut the top off of it, made a uh, cigarette ashtray for me. <laughs> and he, by using his special tools, he drew a picture of uh, Cregator Island. Oh, That's where we were when, when I was talking with him, got him, and he made a note on there that I asked him to my wife and I were married October 29th, oh, yeah. 43. So he he made that uh, image on the base of that. I've got it at the house. You do? Oh. I should have brought that. Yeah, I would have been. I guess maybe we better get you back to the States then. Well, and then, then when was it you left? Let's well, see, the Philippines is where you all Came back in August of uh, 46. Oh, yeah. And you, where, where'd you land in? Uh, At uh, L.A. L.A., oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, wh wh where did they send you then? Or was well, I was discharged there. Oh, I, you was discharged there. Oh. My wife was in California. She came out with us, lived with her sister. Oh, huh. When she knew I was coming back. Oh, yeah. So I met her there. Oh, gosh. And. I see, you didn't have any children before you went over there. No. No. Oh, I, I, how long, what was the longest period of time that you separated from your wife, would you say? Well, I suppose this is a, uh, yeah, that would have been the, been the oh. Philippine trip, which was 
a little over a year. Oh yeah, gosh, that, that, uh, I bet that's a, quite an experience. Uh, you, know, you always think have a family reunion, had not seen anybody for a couple of months or something, but boy, to, to be separated from your wife that long, yeah, would be, yeah, uh, would really be. So, uh, uh, so what? Uh, what what is it kind of like to? You, they, that's where you were discharged from, mm -hmm. and. and uh, what was it? Uh, what did you think you had any time of getting used to back to the civilian life, or? Oh, I didn't have any trouble. I, I was surprised when I saw how big a quart of milk was, because <laughs> I didn't have any milk. Man, and boy, that, that's a big bottle. And I loved, oh. loved milk. Oh, yeah. oh man. Oh, that was. It was like heaven. Oh, I'll bet it was. To get to see the regular things that you're used to seeing and eating and drinking. Oh, oh yeah, I'll bet, yeah. There was none of this uh, uh, oh, condensed uh, powdered milk or powdered. But you know, I had, a, I had a good experience in the service. Oh, yeah. I really did. I was fortunate. I was with the same group. Oh, yeah. My soldiers that, in the division stayed with us in training, Europe. And the Philippines, same guys. Is that, I had. I mean, you started in Oklahoma, or where was it? No, started in uh, Louisiana. Oh, Louisiana, yes, that right. And went to California for training, Europe, Philippines, same guys. Oh, is that? Same. I was in the same company. Oh, yes. The same battalions, the same group, and I had the same guys in my unit. I had twelve guys oh, that yes. were regulars. You know, and oh, that, that means something. That I means, and did a lot of traveling, saw a lot of country, and basically had some good experiences. Really did. Boy. Well, let's see. Do you have a reunion? What's your group once in a while? Yeah, once a year. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you move that around certain places. Yeah, right? it'll be in New Orleans. Uh, oh. Uh, in uh, September. Oh yeah. Say you. You've been down to that D-Day uh, Museum? I'm not, I haven't seen it yet. Oh. I'm actually, it's on one of our tour days oh, it's set is. up. Gosh, that ought, that ought to be a uh, great experience. Uh, that, that's pretty unusual that you went with the same guys all, there's just so many of them were replacements. That, I feel sorry for the, the guys who went to Vietnam. Oh, yeah. Individually, they never got any of camaraderie build up. Oh, yeah. Uh, Iraq was a little different because they went over as guard units or regular army. So they had the ability to uh, get together, know each other well, but Vietnam was probably the worst. Oh, I I've had a son that went there. Oh. And, uh, you know, go for a year, and here you join with that outfit there. You don't know anybody. First thing you know, two or three of those have gone home, and new guys come in. And I think they lose their ability to, <coughs> to fight when they don't have that camaraderie yeah. developed. I never thought about that, but I can see what you, and then too, like some of them say too, you kind of like to know who's uh, alongside of you, what kind of a person he is. And, you bet. Oh yeah. But basically then, uh, when you discharged, you went back to, uh, see, it was your dad, or what was you? You went back to your work, what was? Dad was in the, uh, among other things, was uh, excavation business, road building, site development, farm, terraces and ponds, and oh, that kind of work. So I really came back thinking I'd go back to school and get some engineering. Oh, uh -huh. But I got as far as the front hallway of Seton Hall. <laughs> and I looked down those long, dreary hallways and I said, no way, I can't do it. <laughs> so I joined the company and, and stayed with the excavation business. So you really didn't use the G. You didn't use the GI Bill. No, no <laughs> you had your. Uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. Great. Yeah, boy, I did. but did you find it? You know, being used to the military, you know, you do this and do that on certain times, and this. Of course, it, I don't know if it was much of an adjustment for you when you got home. Oh, not really, because it wasn't. It wasn't a hassle for me. Oh, I yeah. I had trouble. You know. It. Uh, I think it helped me. Develop some leadership skills. Oh yes. Because it was my first time to work with people. Oh yeah. And uh, had an old tough, regular army 
sergeant that was my my platoon sergeant, tougher than nails. And uh, the soldiers were guys from Oklahoma, oh, yeah. California, New York City, Nebraska, Florida. So the ability to work with all those different geographic guys, regular guys, some guys with college degrees, and oh. some guys that one guy they let out of prison if he'd <laughs> agree to join the army. Couldn't read nor write, but he could sure play cards. <laughs> so just the whole gamut. Oh, yeah. That you work with, and it it was it was okay, yeah. it was okay. You didn't have any discipline problems or anything. Everybody was up. The guy from New York had a little trouble with him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like to pull KP duty. Oh. <laughs> he was paying some guy to pull it for him, and I said, "Don't do that anymore." He did it again. I said, "Don't do that." He did it again. I says, "You're grounded." You can't leave the side area for 30 days. Oh. Every day you work with the supply sergeant. Sign in every hour in the orderly room. Every hour of the day, 24 hours a day. We're about ready to ship out. He said, well, what about my girlfriend in LA? I said, you just write her a letter because you're not going to see her till we get home again. And oh, he, would, he wouldn't, wouldn't talk to me for several months. <laughs> But finally, before he ship came home from the Philippines, he looked me up. He came home before I did. He said, I want to thank you for the experience that I've gotten. He said, it's real important for me, and felt good about it. Now, he's, a, he's just one of several people that have had that kind of an experience. He grew up. He'd had two years of college. Oh, yeah. And he was mad because I appointed three other guys as squad leaders that didn't have any college. <laughs> but he learned that, oh. that there's other people out there and some people have skills that others don't have. Yeah. Oh. But it's a growth experience for me as well as for him. And I'm sure thousands of other guys that will have the same kind of stories. I think I'd support a requirement for every high school graduate to spend at least one year in some kind of military uh, experience. I think most kids would benefit from that exposure. Well, I sure agree with you there. I know my, for years I put in the military, I don't know if I've made it through. It's really a, a experience in you. It's, you get a chance to, uh, you, you're on your own and you've you, you got to uh, work with the team too. And that's what, yep. Oh, yep. that really is interesting. Yep. Well, let's see. I guess we're getting about the end of the rope here on the show. And so we sure do thank you again, Burke. And maybe if you have some other things that you want us to talk about, we can uh, get back again. But boy, and I, I guess the other thing is, if it wouldn't have been for you when we first had that first meeting, we wanted to know whether we should go ahead with this. And you was on that committee, and, and uh, I asked, uh, what do you think we ought to go, go with it? Oh, Bert spoke up, let's go for it. <laughs> and look where we are today. We sure do thank you, Bert, for yeah. all the help you've given to the uh, committee and work too.